Hi everybody and welcome to Dreaming in Fibre. I am your host Sarah from sarahstextuarecrafts.com. Happy New Year! I can't quite believe it's January 2013 already but yeah it sure is so welcome to the show today. What have I got lined up for you? Well I'm going to talk about December in review. I'm going to talk about January shows and workshops. Briefly about my 2013 collection. Um, I've got a book giveaway, I've got some personal knitting and some business planning for the new year. So let's get started. we we'll start with December in review. Um, if you watched last month you may remember that I was having a very odd um, beginning of December 2012. Um, December kind of carried on in the same vein. It was a very odd month. Um, many extremes. Um, culminating in late on Saturday evening which I think was the 22nd of December I started to get um, toothache well it wasn't really a toothache it was like a, a sort of gum ache but shooting pains across my mouth and starting to ache and things like that and I thought oh maybe this is a bout of gingivitis because for the last five or six years I've been told that I, I suffer with gingivitis and it will come on in bouts every now and again and that the only way I can really deal with that is to regularly maintain um, you know hygiene and dental appointments and such and use uh, corsidil mouthwash and um, toothpaste that's fine do all of that um, and this I thought you know well, maybe this pain might subside fingers crossed but if not there's really nothing I can do until Christmas Eve which was the Monday um, and see you know whether the dentist is open so anyway the unfortunately the pain progressed so it got to a point where um, Monday morning I could hardly speak and I was just in tears with with pain went to the dentist only to be told that it's not gingivitis at all and, and hasn't been in fact it's an exposed nerve um, I have a slight gap between two of my teeth um, and the gap has made one of the teeth slightly mobile and where it's mobile it continually hits and aggravates a nerve um, and sometimes the pressure will build up and, and give me this pain sensation which I was previously told was gingivitis by a different dentist so anyway now at this new dentist they've discovered what the problem was so <laughs> Christmas Eve, I'm in the dentist chair, I have to have um, my tooth drained because an abscess has formed and it's formed a huge lump on my face. I mean it honestly looked like I'd been punched in the face, it was horrible and painful. Um, she was a great dentist. Um, she Normally when I go to the dentist I can still feel um, a lot of the sensations and pain when they're drilling into my teeth. She gave me one injection, normally I have about seven small ones, but she gave me one injection and it just did the trick. I didn't feel a thing, I was much calmer than I normally am in the dentist because I couldn't feel any of the pain. Um, gave It really did bruise me, I was hugely bruised on the inside of my mouth all around there, completely black. Um, and I came up with a black eye for Christmas, which was lovely <laughs> so I tried to avoid as many Christmas photos as possible <laughs> for fearing I would look like I'd been in some kind of altercation on Christmas Eve <laughs> um, but thankfully that uh, she, she'd sort of packed the tooth with antibiotics and, and refilled it and I have to go back at the end of January for x-rays and things but essentially it looks like it's going to be a root canal and they think the the nerve was exposed um, because my teeth had, had, had sort of separated and settled out after having a wisdom tooth removed about six, seven years ago. Um, so anyway, it, it, it all kind of, that, that helped and, and all kind of died down. I, I do suffer with slight reaction to antibiotics, anything other than amoxicillin, so um, I did have a slight reaction and really didn't feel well for about a week afterwards. Um, but fortunately whatever she did did the trick and the abscess has now gone down so I just really have to go back get those x-rays done and then 
proceed to the root canal procedure and everything. So I was really, really grateful to the dentist. Um, she was fantastic. Um, so that wasn't a great start to Christmas, but I have to say that um, family pulled out all the stops and those that came to spend Christmas Day and Boxing Day with us really just, you know, helped to make us feel a lot better. Um, because we'd had several other things happen, like the car broke down again, and and so on, and and we were just by the time it got to Christmas, me and Darren were pretty much over it, and you know, <laughs> really needed cheering up. So, really grateful to everyone who came, um, and to you know family who we phoned and so on. They made Christmas really special and and much better. Um, so, yeah, kind of. A month in extremes and January sort of started a month in extremes in that um, the car broke down again in the middle of traffic. Um, I think there's something wrong with the electrics. The problem is that we have an automatic car um, so when the electrics go you can't be bump started. Um, so thank you to the motorcyclist who rather um, thankfully stopped and, and offered his help he was you know fantastic because many people just carried on driving past couldn't couldn't care less um but you know with the the good a good samaritan like that it was it was great to know that you know we weren't completely stuck um also a big thank you to hsbc bank as well because they uh, we have um a breakdown call out with them so before Christmas when we broke down they uh, they came out they sent out somebody to us within I think an hour they were there um, and sorted everything out for us and everything was was free of charge I mean fortunately it was it was all electrical and it managed to to start so there was nothing that really needed work doing to it but it's definitely looking like in the long term we're going to have to consider purchasing a new car which is a bit of a bummer because um, you know what it's like in the new year you always seem to start January a bit short of cash even though I'd bought all of the presents a long way in advance so um, yeah a bit of a bummer that it looks like we're going to have to buy a new car um, and also you might hear some beeping in the background that's my printer um, which has suddenly decided since it's come back to work from Christmas that it wants to die and it's making these horrendous noises when I switch it on in the morning um, and these slight beeping noises throughout the day and I'm just trying best to ignore it I, you know, you know what they say, if you ignore it it will get bored of its whining and it will give up so that's what I'm hoping <laughs> we shall see <laughs> Sorry, knocked over a basket there. So, yeah, kind of a month of extremes, if you like. But I'm hoping January will be much better. Um, sorry for the sound of traffic outside, it's extra busy today. Um, a lot of the farms, I think, are really starting to gear up for, for what they can do in the spring. Um, we've had heavy rain here and a lot of flooding, so it's the first time in weeks now that we've had a few days of dry weather. Um, that some of the farms have been able to get back in the fields and, and really start things going so I've got a lot of tractors and stuff going past so apologies if you hear that um, but aside from that um, you know it, it's January I've got um, a lot on the books to do and to get done and really looking forward to another year working at Sarah's Texture Crafts and, and working with you on your projects and your fibre follies throughout the year um, starting on a positive note I think that's how we should go on so I guess we should talk about January shows and workshops I have a workshop on the 16th of January now I was going to spend time advertising this in advance um, it's run through a company called The Craft Hub which is thecrafthub.co.uk um, and that's a company based in Exeter run by Hannah and Pip and it seems to be a, a sort of twofold business in that they host craft events like craft fairs and things 
Uh, they had one in December, I think, um, up at Exeter Castle, and they basically it's 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 a craft fair hosted for local craftsmen um, and women, you know, makers of, of finished product really, um, to to be able to sell their wares to the public. And they also do other events called um, craft jams, which are basically pub evenings. They run once a month, I think, usually, I think it's the second, no, this happens to be the third week. So I don't know whether it's the third week of every month. It might be the second or third week of every month. Um, but that runs 8 till 10 p.m. And the idea is that, um, you know, a group of people come together to learn a different craft, meet people in the area or catch up with friends who they've met on the craft jam on previous events and to to really in, enjoy learning new crafts together um, and have a drink or two. So they've asked me to come along and teach some needle felting so I you know rather gratefully agreed um, this was something part of my new year plans to sort of get out there and do a bit more teaching again. Um, I last taught Ooh, I want to say about four or five years ago up at Alexandra Palace and I did a needle felting workshop there um, which went really well but since moving down here um, there's been a lot of different things gone on and business has, has taken sort of different directions and I've not really had the time or been able to find a suitable venue um, to continue those sort of workshops so I agreed the moment that they emailed me and I thought it would be a really good excuse to get back out there and start teaching again so what I've decided to do is keep the class really basic to teach um, basic techniques i.e. how to you know get get started on a 2D um, piece um, and also about blending colours and things like that so I've started my demo everyone's going to work on Van Gogh's Starry Night and it will be their interpretation of. So I've started my little demo piece which is rather rough and ready and still needs finishing but that's it at the moment. I need to um, finish that this weekend. I'm just using merino um, wool tops on a merino pre-felt base. I do coloured pre-felt at the moment in the, on the website sarahtexturecrafts.com and hope to have some of the natural back in stock from mid-February. So I've got that to, to finish and that class to look forward to. Um, as of today I've got about 36 people booked in for that which is kind of quite scary because <laughs> that's a huge number. Um, normally I do more intimate things so no more than sort of 20 25 people so 10 or so extra people isn't the end of the world it isn't much much more complicated but it certainly means that I have to kind of make sure that I get around the class when I do my walk around to make sure that I see everybody and you know I catch those that are struggling to help out and you know maybe those who are a bit more advanced give them ideas of how much further they could take the project either in, within the class or when they get home um, and I really you know I just want to make sure that everybody has a good time so hopefully that should be okay. Um, the next thing I'm working on is Craft for Crafters which is a the show at West Point I'm looking at my new wall planner um, 24th to the 26th of January um, West Point in Exeter. Um, Craft for Crafters has been run for many years now. Um, it's one of two craft events held at West Point on an annual basis. And I've been there many times as a customer, but this is the first time I will have been there as a vendor. The last show I did that was similar to this was at London Olympia when I did I think it was called Stitch and Craft. It's like the sister event to the Alley Pally um, craft show. Um, I'm looking forward to it. 
I have quite a lot cut and prepared. Um, I only have a two meter by two meter stool, so in terms of stock, I'm having to kind of limit the focus. So I've taken the decision not to take any hand knitting yarn. Um, I've taken that decision for two reasons. One, because I know there are going to be um, a few companies who are selling yarn off cheap. And so to have that sitting alongside somebody who's selling essentially artisan luxury yarns, which is what I'll be selling hand dyed, at a much higher high, uh, price point, I'm not sure how well I will fare in terms of sales. Also because there's quite a strong knitting focus, I wanted to almost try and have an edge. So I might take some of my sale yarn, um, I'm having a sale on at sarahstexturecrafts.com which I'll speak about more in a moment. Um, but I wanted my focus to be slightly different because otherwise, whilst you're cashing in on a general theme, you're fighting for sales with other people. And I th think with the other people that are there, I don't know how many people, customers would get or understand or have the budget for a higher priced yarn. I don't know, I could be completely wrong, but I do only have a two metre by two metre stool, as I say. If I had a bigger stool, I would take it and, and take the chance. But what I'm trying to do is shift the focus more to felting and spinning. Felting is fast becoming popular again. And I know certainly with the with the numbers of the workshop, I and mean, we expected only 25 people, so to have 36 in the end, um, well, at the latest count anyway, is shows how popular the craft has become so I think that's going to be my kind of main focus felting and then you know obviously having fibres for spinners and things so if, if you are a customer and you're a spinner you, there will be stuff there for you there will be a selection of hand dyed and natural fibres as well as um, merinos and so okay sorry about that um, phone call what can I say it's going to be one of those days I think but better to be busy than not, so <laughs> that's fine. So what was I talking about? I think I was talking about craft for crafters and the fact that I'm going to be focusing more towards felt making, that kind of thing. So stock will relate obviously to that product. There will be kits, um, equipment, there will be um, things like 25 gram balls of merino so you can select the colours that you want. There'll be um, some leftover New Zealand Corydale, which is my end of line, so once it's gone, it's gone. Um, what else will there be? I will have some silk scarves for nano felting. Um, I will have a few other bits and pieces, a few new lines as well. Um, I'm creating what I'm calling um, a texture box, and I'll show you more of that next time once I've got kind of things ready and well hopefully there'll be absolutely none left but um, <laughs> they they will be um, launched at the show and essentially they're going to be bits and pieces of different fibres and things so if you're an embellisher or if you're a felt maker or even if you're a spinner looking to create art yarns then um, these are the boxes to go for because they've got lots of you know sort of interesting hand dyed versus commercially dyed textures speciality fibres that kind of thing in them so that's craft for crafters if you do fancy coming along I think the tickets are 650 or 750 before concessions um, as I say that's at West Point in Exeter on the 24th to the 26th of January so if you do come along I would really appreciate that you come by and say hi because I'll probably be a little bit nervous because it's uh, a departure from the normal type of wall show that I do, so um hoping it goes okay. <laughs> um, also, I should probably mention quite quickly about the sale. Um, I know that I briefly mentioned it a few moments ago, but I am having a sale of some end-of-line bits and pieces on the website at sarahstexturecrafts.com. So do make your way over there. I have things like cotton, silk, some baby camel. Um, I have a few end-of-line yarns as well. 
so come and fill your boots on those because once it's gone they, they won't be replaced. Um, I'm also holding 2012 prices until February for two reasons. Firstly, I tend to do this annually because it's my way of offering you that seasonal discount. Um, but also because I am so, so busy, I just haven't had time to put the new prices on the website. So come and fill your boots with as much fibre and equipment as you like while you can at 2012 prices from the beginning of February they will be raised I don't foresee the prices going up vastly but there will be an increase this year I have held my prices on the majority of fibres and in fact in some cases decreased my prices on some fibres over the last two three years so unfortunately we're at a point where I can no longer take hits um, when my suppliers increase their cost prices. My margins just are not big enough to, to sustain that so I will have to pass them on but I, as I say I don't foresee them being huge. I did speak to you previously um, last year about the increase in price on hand dyed product so my hand dyed braids will probably go from 4.75 to 5.75. I know it's a pound hike in price however I'm still almost half the price of my competitors um, who start selling at around 8. Probably now with their price increases you're looking at 8.50 so that's still a vast um, saving on hand dyed braids for 100 grams so I hope you'll bear with me on that, but um, as a small business it is becoming ever increasingly important to make sure that I can maintain a margin so that I can survive. Um, on that note, I just wanted to kind of mention, I noticed that quite a few companies have closed down this last December. Some of them had, I, I know, were kind of, you know, sort of natural industry wastage in, in that um, they've come to retirement age so they're retiring and, and either selling the business or, or moving on um, and some people make life-changing decisions where they have to give up the business in order to be able to go on and do something else um, but I know that um, there have been a few shops and businesses that have retired early or closed their shops due to financial reasons um, and this is becoming more increasingly the case, it seems, which is a bit worrying going into the new year. I mean, I know, you know, obviously we're in recession, so it's to be accepted, uh, expected rather, but um, I think also it is based on a number of other factors. I know certainly for the last year, year and a half, some of those larger retailers have certainly ramped up their selling um, capabilities in a number of ways and some of them who were initially suppliers have now launched themselves as, as huge retailers and it's impossible for smaller businesses to keep up with that and to have margins that are as low as, as they have. Um, so smaller companies and shops in particular are taking real hits because of course um, rents and things are continually increasing so you know when you have to keep um, your margins as low as they are and in some cases decrease to, to try and, and compete with the with the bigger boys I know that it's it's hard out there so kind of mourning the loss of a few of those businesses um, you know the business part of me is like well you know that's less competition and, and that is the way it goes in business but it, it's certainly um, a bit concerning and a bit sad um, because I think particularly with independence um, not just by my my own trumpet but you know I know there are plenty of independents out there where you know if it weren't for them the fibre industry would be a pretty bland place there is so much creativity and inspiration to come from smaller independents that you can't get in larger companies because they don't have the time or the individuals there who who have those creative ideas and, and very innovative ideas on that level. Um, I mean of course they certainly come along later and replicate it 
to maximise their sales, but it's really those smaller independents that we rely on as an industry to keep us excited and, and inspired. So it's a real shame to lose them. Um, so I'm hoping 2013 that um, you know maybe it could be the year where we support the independent a bit more. Um, I know certainly I am, am trying to, um, you know, when I look to buy things, I'm trying to source either locally or from independents or smaller companies. Um, certainly some of the Christmas presents that I did buy and didn't make myself, um, I tried to buy from smaller businesses that I found either on Etsy or, or via other um, websites or from shows and things. Um, and I hope that you know, we can all, as, as tight as our budgets are, try and, and bear that in mind and support as many independents as we can because we really need those people to keep the inspiration alive, really. Um, so, my 2013 collection. Well, I had hoped to um, have enough time to show you a few new bits and pieces, but it kind of didn't happen. I was hoping, even though I was closed over Christmas, to do um little bits and pieces um to be able to show you some things and i i have done some things but i'm not in a place at the moment where sorry that's my neighbor on his motorbike sounds lovely but not while i'm podcasting <laughs> so yeah i mean i i'd hope to 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 be a bit further along and to be able to show you some things but I'm I don't feel I'm quite there yet so I think next month I'm going to I'll probably split the podcast because next month I have two things to talk about that are really gonna take a lot of time and um and discussion. The first thing being Craft for Crafters I'd like to um take you on a virtual tour of the show and sort of do my um diary of a show if you like. And then secondly, I have the collection to talk about. It will be the first part of the collection, so it won't be a full um, review of the entire collection, but it will certainly take some time to talk about, so I may have to separate it into um, two separate podcasts. We'll see. Um, so yes, I am, I'm working behind the scenes on my 2013 collection. There will be hand-dyed tops in new colours, variegated and semi-solid. There will be bats, there will be um, merino shade packs in new colourways. Um, I'm hoping to um, have by March um, a new range of yarns. Um, these will be more repeatable colours. Up until now I've tended to do bits of this and bits of that as people have asked for them and as I've had time to do them but with the idea that I would like to go into wholesale um, I think that you know I need to be much more consistent and have a range as such so that's something I'm working on as well. Um, the next thing I didn't get a chance to speak about this last time because it, it came about rather um, late on in December um, after I'd already put the podcast out. I have been approached by a company, um, a publishing company, and I'll just reach over and get the book, um, Bloomsbury Publishing, and they have asked me to start reviewing books for them. Um, it will be books that are related to either wool or textiles. I had another one on the way, but I did um, already do a review, and I just wanted to give you a heads up that the book I reviewed which is Hand Stitch Perspectives. That video and giveaway is up on my Crafts of Texture blog, so I will put links to that in the show notes at um, dreamingandfibre.blogspot.com. I will um, also put a link down below here so that you can be with, um, you know, get yourself in with a chance to, to win this fabulous book. The um, competition is open to UK residents only, I'm afraid, just because of the sheer weight of this book, so therefore the cost of shipping is, is going to be quite huge. Um, however, there is a 20% discount code, so if you are in the UK and you don't win, but you want to take advantage of that discount code, or if you're overseas and you can't enter the competition, you still have a chance to use that discount code and get, I think it's 20% off of your um, purchase of the book. So, um, yeah, 
check it out. It's a, it's a good book. I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed reviewing it. And I'm looking forward to the next book that's going to arrive for me, hopefully quite soon. Um, we shall see. More news on that next time. So, personal knitting. What did I get done? Well, I... I didn't really get as much done as I wanted to, to be honest, not feeling well over Christmas and having done as many sort of uh, Christmas present knits and, and felt projects and things as I did before Christmas, I really kind of haven't been in the mood as much for crafting as, as I would normally be. Um, but I do have a few things on the go, so let me show you where I'm at. I'm probably going to lean out of frame, so apologies for that. But we'll start with the first one. I've got, um, there are two babies in the family that are on their way. One due February and one due um, end of April, I think. So I am I know that one will be a baby girl. We're not sure what the, the gender of the other baby will be. So I've started knitting. I picked up this yarn last year with the intendant that it would, intention that it would be for the baby girl. But as I started knitting, I still think the yarn has probably come out quite girly, so it could well be for the, the baby girl, but I don't think it will be a present that I give on the birth of the baby. It might hold until later in the year, probably a Christmas present, um, because my gauge was so far off, it was ridiculous. Um, I went up a whole other size and a bit. So, ignore the, I mean it's not blocked, it's not, when ends are not woven in or anything, um, it's the start of a baby bunting. So, um, I need to, it's a, pretty much a, a, an easy knit, just a garter stitch knit, buttonholes at the front, um, I need to finish the hood, um, and this is a pattern, it's called Baby Drops. 14-14 by Drops Design. You can get it on Ravelry. If I remember right, it was a free pattern, but I might be wrong there. I'll find out and put that in the show notes. But um, that's what it should look like. I hope you can see that. So just a cute little bunting bag that... Um, you know, baby can be in, whether it's travelling in the car or falling asleep in the cot, that kind of thing. Knitted it up. I've knitted it in acrylic. Um, this is a really nice hand fill acrylic. It's not crunchy, it's not hard to knit with. It's a little bit fluffy so I did find that I needed to sort of have a roll of sellotape near me <laughs> so that I could, you know, sort of wipe off the fluff afterwards. Um, but I think probably after I've washed it and blocked it and um, that fluff will certainly die down. It you know what it's like, sometimes you get a, a ball of yarn and it's fluffy while you knit but the moment you wash it that fluff dies down, it's like that, you know, the sort of fluff isn't really attached properly in the yarn, um, that sort of surface fluff. Um, knitting up really nicely, really quickly actually. As I say I just need to do the hood, block it, then place the buttons and finish off. I wasn't so keen on the button bands, I have to say. Um, my gauge is looser when I do um, stock in it as opposed to garter stitch. So I'm hoping that I will be able to block that or I might um, cover that with some grow grain. Not sure. But I've, I have picked out some buttons. I will just double check. The, the buttonholes is just a one stitch yarn over. So they'll be quite small buttons really. Um, so I'll see when I've, I've blocked it whether the buttons that I have in mind in my stash fit. If not, then I can buy some new ones, that's not a problem. But I just really wanted it to be an easy wash, so whichever mother receives it um, for their baby, they really haven't got to worry too much about wash, washing, special washing instructions, that kind of thing. I also wanted to insert here somewhere a picture of um, my sister's shawl that I finished for Christmas. This is a picture of my sister wearing it.
she loved it. Um, I was really pleased because um, I kind of made it up. I got so far and and then I when I got to the the pattern part of of the shawl it's a it's a top down shawl I had a pattern in mind but I'm still not fantastic at reading charts I prefer if I have a chart still to have written instructions to mirror the the chart instruction um just because there are, normally when I pick up my projects of as I've said this before, it's normally about nine o'clock in the evening, so I'm really not in the mood to be overly complicated um, by, you know, instructions and fancy patterns and that kind of thing. So I thought, well, if if I can have a pattern that has written instructions as well as chart, then I can just choose whichever is easiest for me, depending on my frame of mind when I come to knit it. Um, so anyway, I picked out this pattern. And I just, I just couldn't get on with that. I did so many rows, and then I'd have to tink back because something just didn't make sense. And it was probably me. It was probably missing something really important and and not noticing that I'd done it. But I decided to tink back, and in the end, I just thought rather than continuing to try and knit this um, particular pattern and not really getting anywhere, what I would do instead is is just make it up. Jane Thornley style by the mix of double yarn overs, eyelets, um, moss stitch, garter, stockinette and so on and created this shawl for my sister. I, I did a, a pico edge which I did in a contrast colour. I used Artisano 4 ply 100% alpaca yarn. Um, the recommended needle for this was 2.75 or a 3.25 millimeter. I think I used something slightly bigger. I think I used might have been three and a half actually or 3.75 millimeter. But I used that because I wanted a slightly more airy feel to the yarn, and actually I think it worked out quite well. And my sister was pleased with it, so that's the main thing. What else have I been knitting on? Well, I started. Um, uh, a jumper and I won't bother showing you the pattern at the moment because I might deviate quite drastically from the pattern beyond the rib but literally as you can see I've cast on and started knitting the rib I'm knitting on shorter circulars at the moment just because um, because why? because um, I find that actually that this sort of length of cord is, is just easier on my hands as I'm knitting rib. So I'm going to sort of decant this on to longer, um, longer cords as I go along. These are on my interchangeable Knit Pro needles. Um, I'm using the um, stainless steel tip, which actually I prefer. Um, these, I, I bought a set of these last year from Amazon forget how much I paid for them um, but they these have just been invaluable and I don't think I've knit on any other needles since I've had these which is a really good sign the only other time I think I would swap to a different needle is A if I were going somewhere I probably wouldn't take these I would probably switch to bamboo um, just because my bamboo needles were cheaper so if I lose them it was a cheaper project um, a, a cheaper replacement needle um, or I might swap to my chai goo needles because the chai goo lace needles I have if I'm knitting um, a, a lighter weight shawl certainly they have much more pointier tips and are ideal for lace weight yarns so otherwise I, I don't see a reason really for me to change from these needles which is a pretty good endorsement I think of these um, love them so, so that's that again I'm knitting this um, I'm knitting this in an acrylic. It doesn't feel like a really bad acrylic, you know, it's really nice and soft and could be mistaken for a wool blend actually. But the reason why I'm knitting this in acrylic is I wanted an easy jumper that I could just throw on when I go to the shops or that I could throw on here at home while I'm working and not really worry too much about if I get fluff on it um, or um, if I get a splash of dye on it or something like that. 
it's just a quick wash, something I can stick in the washing machine and not worry about. Um, I do have those other special knits that I knit in 100% wool or hand spun and that kind of thing and that's what I prefer to knit with. But I do think there's a room for the occasional bit of good quality acrylic um, for no other reason than convenience wearing. So yeah, you're probably scowling at, at, the, at your monitor thinking, really? A girl selling wool yarn knitting exclusively in acrylic at the moment? Not good, but you know, that's sometimes needs must, you know? I did manage to get a few moments on my spinning wheel after my um, antibiotics really set in and um, my, my gums and, and teeth started feeling a lot better. I really wanted to get back on the wheel because over Christmas I wanted to finish my birthday fibre and Darren bought me some um, Coopworth finger roving off of Etsy from uh, an American seller. I forget the name now, which is really bad. Let me see. I've got Etsy open here. I might be able to um, find the name of that shop for you. I know it was Colour Beach Ball. And it's by a company called Good Shepherd Fibres. She is based in America and she has quite a range of rovings. Um, this is Coopworth, as I say. She also does blends of um, Shetland and Merino. I'm not sure whether these come from her own sheep or whether she buys the finger roving in. Um, she does have her own goats it looks like. Um, but yeah, I mean fairly reasonable in price. Um, I bought this as, sorry I'm, I'm taking a look on Etsy just to make sure I give you the right information. Taking a while to come up for some reason, but let me have a look at my invoice. I paid $32.99, which um, was inclusive of shipping, which I paid an express rate of $13. So, all in all, for eight ounces, I paid, or oh, Darren Blessing paid. £22.06 and p at the time. Um, I love the colour but I found the roving a little bit hard to work with. It was nothing to do with dye or um, anything like that. It was, I think that um, Coopworth seems to be quite a short staple fibre. I haven't had a chance to um, have a look at it really. Um, in in my books, so I, I haven't had chance to really sort of research the fibre, but it does seem like quite a short staple. So when you you get roving, there is an element of inconsistency, and that I don't know whether that's that inconsistency is possibly a result of my preferring to work with tops or bats. A good prepped bat is easier to work with for me than roving. I don't know. Maybe that's just a personal preference but in the end I decided to chain ply this so I could get colour variation and whatever I knit. I've got two um, two skeins there. I'm not sure yet on yardage but I'm getting about an Aran weight on the chain ply there. Um, I was hoping to two ply it to get a double knit weight um, but when I came to two ply it, it just it didn't really want to behave itself and I couldn't quite work out why um, so I ended up chain plying which was fine it was absolutely fine and as I say it's probably given me a better finish than in, in terms of colour than I would have got maybe with a, a two ply um, finish Unfortunately less yardage, but as I say I've got two skeins there and there looks like quite a hefty amount of, of yarn there, so I'll certainly get something quite nice out of that. 
so I'm looking forward to setting that seeing how it washes up I think um, it, it's quite a I don't want to use the word scratchy but there's quite a sort of robust and, and slightly coarse nature to the feel of the fibre so I'm not sure how much that will soften up when I wash it but um, I'm expecting it to become a little bit more um, haloed as well, a little bit more fluffy so it probably won't be something that I wear directly next to the skin but I think it will certainly be something that will give me an element of warmth so um, thinking caps on I think for me um, once this is dry and after the show um, probably February time I'll get a chance to, to really consider knitting that because I've got quite a lot of um, hand spun yarn at the moment that I haven't had a chance to knit so I think for the first few months apart from those projects that you've seen on the go I really need to get started working on my own hand spun and turning them into some beautiful things and the last thing I wanted to show you is um, some weaving off the loom. I can't remember whether I showed you this before or not, so I'll just show it quickly. Um, this is, it's going to be a bag. Um, I've yet to find some lining for it. If I did mention this before, I mentioned that I was going to hunt for some eye cat lining. And I can't seem to find some basic indigo eye cat in, in a nice weight the lining at all, I can't find it anywhere. So um, going back to the board on that one, um, I might felt the inside, I'm not sure. We shall see, I'll have a think about that. I'm still really loving the reverse as much as I am the, the front, so I'm not sure how, I haven't woven in the ends yet because I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to construct the bag. But I'm probably going to get some dark wood handles for that. I've got a few places in mind. So once I get my lining fabric and my construction idea finished, then I can have a look for, for handles and, and go from there. But that is the weft thread is um, my own hand dyed yarn in colour flamingo. And the walk thread is again this lovely 100% alpaca from Artisana Yarns and um, it's a really nice soft feel to that and I'm really looking forward to um, getting that turned into a bag so that I can start to use it. Um, for any of you who are interested in, in where I came up with the pattern ideas well I've been using the hand weavers pattern book I probably mentioned this before and sorry if I have but um, this is a fantastic book that gives you lots of different um, weaving options so that you can set up your um, warp thread in a way to create those um, weft patterns as you weave. So a really useful book. I'll probably do a much more full and detailed review of that in the future. So that's my, my projects, my um, ongoing and a finished project as well and I think that's probably it for today um, I'm hoping this is shorter and sweeter um, but really it was just to touch base with you to say Happy New Year to um, hope that you're all okay and to give you a bit of a heads up about what's happening this month at Sarah's Texture Crafts next month as I say I'm hoping to do um, possibly a two-part podcast or at least one full of information about how the Craft for Crafters show went um, maybe a couple of photos from the workshop if I get lucky um, and also um, my 2003 collection launch or the first part of so I hope you will join me next time here on Dreaming with Fibre until then enjoy Dreaming with Fibre take care of yourself bye